up, brother? Welcome to the podcast. Stop crying, poser. Greatest podcast known to man as voted by Dave Chappelle, Bill Burr, and Burr. It's cold in here. Polar bears like this podcast. God damn it. Motherfucker, what? Who do we got in the chat here today? Steven Steez, Slaphead, Trainwreck, Venus Die Traps, Ring a Ting Ting Bing Bing Boy, Slaphead, 2112, Ezra Singles, OG Mickey, Keith King Radio, Brain Cell, Breachard, Ryu the Nerds, Guy Just Scooting Ain't a Crime, Spice, Archie, <laughs> Ezra, did I say a couple names twice? Maybe I did, because I don't fucking care, because it ain't no motherfucking rules in here. Motherfucker, what? Hoo -hoo! Master P, no limit soldiers, goddammit. They all like the podcast, and so should you. Right here on twitch.tv slash ninja lifestyle, right around 3.30 p.m. Pacific time every Friday. It's a good time. We're a little bit late today. Why are we late? Because beep, 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 Breaking news coming from Instagram. One of Braille's most sought after young bachelors is being accused by the internet of potentially being a pedophile. I'm gonna cover this topic first because I know that's why most of you came here. No one cares about local news. You guys don't want to hear me make jokes. You guys want to hear about your favorite skateboarder, Fetty Potter, potentially being in trouble or maybe being exploited by some people that claim he is a pedophile. So let's first discuss how I met Fetty. I went out to the Braille house for a We Want Revenge, <laughs> a revived preview trailer, uh, premiere, that's the word I'm looking for. It was a premiere of Live, Skate, Die, if I recall. And it was a good time. While I was there for that premiere, uh, one of the days we went skating at, I think, Fremont Park. And I had to be part of one of these things where it's like, oh, fucking Aaron Cairo skates a muffin. Uh, fucking, oh, Aladdin's coming out. So Nigel's going to skate a uh, magic carpet. Oh, Fetty's going to uh, ride some roller blades that, that are called ma magical that float on air. And uh, Ninja is going to skate a skateboard, except instead of bearings, it has fidget spinners. That was the pretenses under which I met him. A lot of people in my DMs think that we're best friends. We're not best friends, although I'm still going to cover this objectively. I've only met the guy one time, and we just talked about tattoos. He was a nice guy to me. Didn't try to lure me into his car. Didn't do anything weird to me. Then again, I'm a grown man. So you can see how there may have been a conflict of interest. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking, guys. Um, so yeah, we hung out, and I've only met him that one time. We never met him again, ever, and it was, uh, it was a good time had by all. The fidgets were spinning. Love was in the air, and we all made content for YouTube. That was back when my YouTube was successful. The good old days. Can we all have a moment of silence for uh, my YouTube channel? Rest in peace. Thank you. I appreciated that. Um, so let's talk about the facts here. We don't have any facts. That's all we have. Let's start at the beginning. The first thing I saw was an Instagram post from someone claiming to be a 14-year-old girl's mother. And in the photo was Fetty standing next to a police officer and the post read something like this i'm sure you guys can go and find it it said uh this guy lured my 14 year old daughter on a day date they left for four hours he came over picked her up and then he left and then um we called the police they talked to him and put his real name and there's a whole story about it i'm not going to read the whole thing i'm pretty much just reciting all of this from memory anyways they said uh he, being 26 years old, was trying to take out this 14-year-old girl, and I guess that's the end of it. So what had initially happened, from my understanding, is all of Fetty's fans started attacking this mom because she had tagged everyone. She tagged Carlos, she tagged Gabe, she tagged Braille, she tagged everything, and in her monologue, she wrote this whole thing about, I can't believe uh, Braille would be a part of this this cat this guy's out here teaching kids he's out here trying to date a 14 year old you can't allow these type of people around kids in a skateboarding environment around kids in general you can't do it 
I think we can all agree with that. But what we can't all agree on is to immediately make this a witch hunt. Because I'm going to pretend for a moment that I'm judge of the world. Judge Steve. Judge Judy's long lost child. Get out of my courtroom, you dumb bitch. Um, <laughs> Mom, fuck you. <laughs> um, I want to look at everything really objectively and sort of like... I sort of want to look at everything like it could be fake, right? I told this to my girlfriend Lily, and she's like, why? Why would anyone lie? And then I had to bring up the story like, oh, well, there's plenty of, like, scooter riders that believe that they've beaten me up, but it never actually happened. And there's also a place called Woodward East where I'm supposedly banned from. And she goes, yeah, fucking so, people make shit up. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course, people make shit up for no reason. I don't know why they do it. It happens. They wouldn't lie about that. Okay, first off, if anyone's gonna lie about me being banned from from the homophobe capital of the world, Woodward West is the worst one, then they're gonna lie about anything. If you lie about one thing, you lie about anything. I'm not saying it's a liar, I'm not saying believe all victims, I'm not saying believe, uh, I'm not saying don't believe all victims, I'm not saying anything like that, okay? But let's discuss how things played out from my perspective. Uh, so, <clears throat> the mom gets all this backlash from Braille fans. And then, I found out today that the mom strikes back. She starts taking all these DMs, screenshotting them, and then posting them to her story as she responds. Like, uh, a lot of the people, I don't know where this information came from, I'm gonna be up front with you guys, 100%. Some people are saying that Fetty did hang out with this chick and didn't know she was 14. So you think to yourself, oh, okay, that's like, that's a... That could be believable, right? That that's possible. That's that could happen. Maybe kids sometimes. Maybe they they're fourteen. Maybe you think that they're eighteen. I don't know. Probably wouldn't happen to me. I think I have. I wear glasses. I'm able to see better. But I feel like uh, you know we don't really know. We don't know the situation. So she's on there responding to everybody and it sort of seems like a really immature thing to do right because she's responding to people saying oh hey you're dumb she's making spelling corrections on people's mean dms and people are just saying like they're just on there defending fetty so i feel like her way of going about this wasn't really the way to do it and also everyone's like hey here's the main demand the main demand is let's see the text messages we want to see the text messages if you don't give us the text messages then there's probably nothing going on. It's probably blown out of proportion, right? Maybe. Or maybe Fetty's telling the truth. Who knows? Or I haven't even heard anything Fetty commented on this at all. So maybe, you know, maybe they never even hung out. All I've seen is a picture of Fetty next to a cop and some text below it written by someone who clearly doesn't like Fetty. So... Ah, <sighs> where did we leave off? So anyways, she's responding to all these things, and all they want to see is the text messages, text messages. And the person keeps avoiding it. No, we won't show you those. And then one of the responses says, if you want to see the text messages, they have, like, child porn on them. We're not going to show you that. Now, here's where I say, well, hold on a second. Stop. Stop. You are able to share the transcripts and block out whatever may be damning or whatever may be. First off, a 14-year-old girl is involved. Last thing we want to do is exploit this person or make their life any more difficult than it already is. Okay, can we all take a step back from this and at least say that? <clears throat> Last thing we want to do is harass this 14-year-old girl who's already, her life is probably being flipped upside down from this shit because in her mind, she's just fucked up this celebrity's life, you know, potentially. So let's take a moment before we say, show the pictures, show the pictures, show the pictures, show the text, so, show the text. <sighs> you don't want to embarrass a fucking child because they made a couple mistakes. You don't want to make them the victim here any more than they've already been. So let's first say that. Let's take a step back. Let's put our pitchforks down for a moment. But also, I think there's a nice happy medium, a nice way to share these transcripts or screenshots of the conversations without incriminating anyone. All I want to see is, did this guy, Fetty, do anything inappropriate? That's all I want to see. And so far, the proof that's been presented, none of it is, none of it proves anything, really. It's just a bunch of he said, 
He said, that's, that's all it is. It's just a bunch of he said. He said, he said, he said. Now, a lot of people are also saying, well, it's her fault. She asked for it, blah, blah, blah. And then a lot of the mom's uh, screenshots on her story were victim blaming, hashtag victim blaming, hashtag me too, hashtag don't blame the victim, hashtag vegan, hashtag f fuck you. It's all these hashtags. And I thought that was a little bit weird that... Your daughter's being exploited, but you're over here just fucking having a hashtag parade. Maybe you're looking for support, I guess. I thought that was a weird way to go about it. If you're a mother of a child who's being exploited, you know, or is in this type of situation, first thing you want to do is look for justice. So they said they called the police. Here's the story I heard. Uh... The girl went missing to hang out with Fetty. Parents found out about it. Neighbors called the cops. And then when Fetty went to drop her off, they blocked Fetty's car in so he couldn't escape. And then the police came. Do I know any of this to be true? No, I don't. That's just the story that I read. For me, everybody, it's one of these DTA situations. Don't trust anyone. I'm just sharing with you guys the bits and pieces of what I've heard. And then maybe we can together come to a logical conclusion without victim blaming and and without jumping to conclusions and without defending somebody just because we like their skating i want us all to be objective about this and uh as train wreck says i can say this has been handled poorly the mom is outing her own kid and fetty in the wrong way she should have ran an investigation instead of throwing it on social media now here is also something i thought was interesting i've seen the show to catch a predator I've seen these motherfuckers get hemmed up and just get took and dragged off to prison right away. If you had time to take a picture of Fetty next to a cop, and it's the cop's job to arrest the pedophile, and at the end of the day, the cop didn't have any evidence, and now today, we still don't have any evidence, then who's to say that this mom is just angry at her daughter for maybe losing control and going and hanging out with a skate celebrity. Maybe she was supposed to do homework that day. And she said, fuck you, mom. Skate or die, motherfucker. R.I.P. Phelps. And just slammed the door. Maybe the mom's mad at that and Fetty's become the scapegoat. I don't know. But I'm just giving you guys possible scenarios under which this entire thing could have happened. And I feel like the way it's, it's playing out, if the mom really wants justice, also, okay. This is annoying. This is my pet peeve, right? This is really annoying to me. A lot of people are DMing the mom, defending Fetty, as you would expect they would, because he has, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of fans. You would expect them to defend him. If somebody said some dumb shit about me, I would hope you guys would go out there and defend me. And eventually just wait for the facts to come out of me being either right or wrong. So... Fetty's fans are defending him, and now the mom is saying, Oh, I'm being bullied. Hashtag bullied. I'm being bullied by Braille. Hashtag bullied by Braille. I'm being bullied. Bitch, you're a fucking adult. These are kids. You've attacked their fucking hero. Grow up. Bullied. The hashtag's not going to save you. Oh, I'm being bullied. Help. Stop it. Stop it with the social media. Stop it with the bullshit. First thing you got to do, fucking screenshot the evidence. Show the cops. Is that not the easiest way to do it? All right? A am I crazy? There's no way that I'm crazy when I look at this. First off, if Fetty is this guy, whether he was ever my friend or not, fuck him. If he was. We don't know. Okay? But also, if this chick is trying to hang this guy out to dry for no reason, then fuck her. You know what I mean? Like, I'm right there in the middle. I'm objective either way. I don't know the real story, but I do think that it's kind of fishy and weird that you would make these accusations and you claim to have the transcripts and you claim to have all this proof, yet for some reason, this guy's not in jail, right? If you have the proof, all it takes is a phone call and the guy would go to jail. But then again, if you don't have any proof, then he's free to go. So the way things have turned out, he's free right now from what I understand, Therefore, the proof hasn't been presented yet. Are we waiting for more proof? What are we waiting for if this guy fucked up? That leads me to lean. Okay, I'm not victim blaming here. But it leads me to lean towards Fetty's side. Because we have we have a country here where uh, if you fuck up and you do something weird to kids, they fucking hang you up, dude. It's over. 
They don't take that shit fucking lightly. It ain't no silly little crime. It ain't like you just went and fucking did a graffiti on a wall or you fucking littered or fucking smoked a cigarette and threw it on a person or something like that. It's it's kids, man. This country, we 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 appreciate the kids. We try to protect them. So my question is, mom, you got all this information. You got all these facts. You got all these screenshots. You got all these transcripts. What's going on? Victim blaming. I'm now victim blaming. So, at the end of the day, I hope that I've given you guys at least a little bit to think about. Uh, some people say they have more information than me. But, presented as proof, a mom fucking talking shit to a bunch of 14-year-old Fetty fans, that's not proof. Okay? 2112 says that mom probably has some sort of agenda she's trying to achieve in the same way you see random girls pop up and accuse actors or athletes of sexual assault or something along those lines. I I don't think so. I think maybe her head's in the right place. I think she just wants to protect her daughter. But I think there might be some kind of appeal here. Like, oh, my daughter has this fucking issue with, with a, a skate celebrity. Ooh, I think it's time to bring out the hashtags. I feel like that might be part of it, too. Because I don't have a daughter. But I'll tell you what. I have a Koopa. He's my one-and-a-half-year-old pit bull. And if... I'm going to tell you guys this right now. If Fetty sexually abused my Koopa, I'd be on the fucking phone with the cops. I'd be checking Koopa's phone. I'd be fucking screenshotting everything. And Fetty would be in jail for bestiality. But I'll tell you what I wouldn't do. I wouldn't be on fucking Instagram putting hashtags responding to all the fans of Koopa out there. Or the fans of Fetty. <laughs> I'm a fan of Koopa. I'm just saying it's it's fishy the way that this is being handled. And there's a lot of people who don't look at it that way. There's people on both ends of this really hard. And here's the thing. I think Fetty's pretty much just in limbo right now. There's nothing he can do to prove himself guilty or innocent. He's just kind of in limbo because he's like the, uh, he's the bad guy, right? Whatever he says is going to be met with a solid, fuck you, asshole. Okay, right? He's in limbo. The mom... And the dad and the parents and even the girl, they're in this situation where it's like, okay, are we going to back this shit up? Are we going to fucking, are we going to put this guy in the coffin? Or are we going to dilly-dally around with these hashtags and pretend that a bunch of Braille fans are bullying me? Stop being bullied. Hashtag me too. I don't understand, but I would like to uh, give this time to the chat room. Whatever you guys want to say. Uh, I'd love to hear about it. Guy just asks me, what do I think happened? I think this is a really slippery slope if I start telling you guys what I think happened. I think we don't have the information, and I think more information is going to come out in the next couple days because this is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. When I first was tagged in this story, and I've been tagged dozens of times, when I was first tagged in this, the initial post had 200 likes. Now it has over 1,000, maybe even more. And this is a person who had no real social media presence. Just randomly got a thousand fucking likes based off uh, people sharing it throughout Instagram. So, uh, I don't know. I think... <laughs> I don't know what happened. One of the stronger arguments I heard, though, is uh, I think someone claiming to sort of be a friend of the family DM'd me with some more information. They said, I've seen this girl. She's 14 years old. She actually looks younger than 14. His argument made a lot of sense to me. And it's the only argument that I think I would fucking tell Fetty. I'd be like, listen to you, you might have fucked up, you fucking idiot. He said that this chick, there's no fucking way in hell. And by the way, I haven't seen the chick. I don't know what she looks like. I have no idea. I'm just relaying what I heard. This is what I was told. He said, if you saw this chick, Steve, there'd be no fucking way in hell you would try to go on a date with her. Because not only does she not look 21, and she doesn't look 18, she doesn't even look 14. And I'll tell you guys, even at my most thirstiest, even when I was 26 years old and I was just thirsty, fucking hounding for puss all around the fucking city, there's no way I would look at somebody and go, wow, you look like a child. And then still, like, go on with it and be like, well, the DM said she was older. I'm the type of guy that would rather err on the side of caution. And uh, also, it's just weird. Nobody wants to fuck a kid. It's weird. Now, I haven't seen the person. That might have been an exaggeration, right? But it is, uh, that's the most logical 
uh, offense, right, or defense, depending on what side you're on. That's the most logical argument I've heard from either side. When you roll up, you're about to hang out with somebody, even if you're not doing something sexual, even if you're just hanging out to grab coffee, or even a skate session, okay? Even a skate session, you roll up to somebody's house saying, yay, what's up, dude, we're about to hang out, and you look over, and you see that you're fucking up, like you're dealing with a 14-year-old girl, you go, I'm fucking up, I'm out of here. Even a boy. My homie Gonzo used to be a skate filmer for this company, this team called Area 702. There was... We were filming a video, right? It's all these kids. They're all underage kids, and they're all filming a skateboarding part, and the whole team is mainly young kids, and me, and Gonzo. <laughs> so what Gonzo would do is he would drive to all these people's houses, pick up these kids. They would all skate together and drive them all to the skate park. He would film them all, then bring them back. There was a lot of concerned parents that this guy Gonzo, this 20, he might have been, he's probably 27, 28 at the time, 28-year-old man overweight man with a camera is picking up their kids to go skating there was a lot of concerned parents okay and then eventually you know they all looked at the final product the video the area 702 video came out and it was amazing and it, gonzo actually is a great fucking filmer and editor and then it sort of brought them at ease but they all had fucking questions okay now imagine if you weren't showing up for work you're just showing up not to film or to to get a video done you're not being paid you're just showing up to hang out i guarantee you guys never in gonzo's entire life or mine would gonzo show up to a 14 year old boy's house to to fucking go skate hey what's up uh, timmy ready to go hop in the back no you're sitting up front man you're the captain mm, here comes the choo-choo train fuck you <laughs> that shit doesn't happen uh, I was talking about this the other day, actually not on the podcast, I was talking about it on one of my Twitch streams. I've had people DM me, and they say, hey, what's up, Steve? Uh, I'm going to be in Vegas in two weeks. I would love to hang out. And then I write, uh, sure, whatever, dude. Um, I'm not really, I only skate on my special schedule. I don't really do that. But I'll tell you what, uh, when you're in town, I'll let you know when I'm at the bar, and you can come to the bar. And then they go, Oh, I'm not old enough for the bar. And I go, oh, probably not going to hang out. And they say, well, maybe you could come to me. And I go, no. And they go, yeah, I'm with my parents. We're staying at Mandalay Bay. I'm 13. And then I go, oh, ignore. Not because I'm a dick. <laughs> okay. Not because I'm a dick, but because it's the conversation's over. We're not going to have some interesting conversation. Me and some 13-year-old who's coming to Vegas. There's nothing's going to become of that. What? I, I don't play Pokemon. I know you're not good at Kaizo Mario. We have nothing in common. You know, I feel like it's just it's just over. It's done. I don't care about it anymore. That might that might be a dick move to do, like just talk to somebody for a minute and then, then block them. Ghosted. MTV's ghosted. Ninja Lifestyle was talking to me. He invited me for a beer, but I'm too young. And then he ghosted me. That's not what happened, motherfucker. <laughs> That's not what happened, motherfucker. I didn't I didn't invite him for a beer. <laughs> ghosted me. Um, yeah, Trainwreck says, it's not a, di a dick move, you're avoiding a sketchy looking situation. No, I'm not, I'm not avoiding a sketchy situation, I just don't have anything to say to you anymore. We're not, we're not gonna become friends, right? If Steven Steez hits me up, he says I'm in town, and I'm busy, or whatever, it's just kinda like, well, let me know when you wanna film. It's like the conversation's done, I just go on with my life. You know, oh, uh, you're, you're, we're not gonna be able to hang out? Okay, the end. Yeah, if you're not gonna come to the bar, then fuck... There's only like two things I do in my life. I play three. Play Mario, I drink beer, and I fucking skate. I'm, I'm not, I only skate once a week, so that's out. <clears throat> uh, you can't drink beer, and you don't play games, kid. We can't hang out. It's not me, like, being the adult, like, oh, I want to avoid this sketchy situation. Wouldn't want anyone to think I'm about to fuck this little skater, kid. No, I'm not thinking about it like that. I'm just done with the conversation. I'm just over it. <laughs> but, uh... In that situation, that's sort of a similar situation where I'm just like, okay, done with it. Don't care about it. And I feel like Fetty, that's the only argument that I would use against him. Is when you get there and you show up and you go, oh shit, you're a little girl. Uh, I got I gotta go. I have to wash my uh, thing. But I gotta wash it. I got something. Something's gotta be washed, bitch. I'm out of here. Just drive away. <laughs> yeah go home take a fucking cold shower but yeah like i said i would like to leave the ball in your guys court i want to hear what you guys maybe think happened or your guys information 2112 says is there any info on how they met in the first place we don't have any information but 
I did see that they actually were speaking over Snapchat, and that's one of uh, the parents' defenses too, right? One of the parents' defenses is that, uh, oh, it was on Snapchat, so the girl deleted everything, and she's defending Fetty. This is also what annoyed me. I also saw a piece <clears throat> of evidence, evidence as you would say, the mom thinks that Fetty is manipulating her daughter into keeping quiet. That's probably not the case. It probably doesn't take that much manipulation to uh, to make this, you know, the, the victim, the, the child, not want to snitch on the guy because maybe it was all some harmless thing. Maybe they were all just going to go get coffee. The little girl certainly doesn't want Fetty to go to jail over some coffee. Then again, if there's like, pictures involved then we might have a fucking problem dude that could be a problem nigel says i'll have to give you a call soon and update you my man these dudes are sitting around not knowing how to handle the situation which is making fetty look worse if that is the real nigel i miss you dog you got to come out here in october and hang out with the boys um i don't know i mean like i've said if you're in fetty's situation everything you do or say is going to be met with a fuck you Shut the fuck up, asshole! Hashtag victim blaming. There's nothing you can really do on that end other than demand proof. And if you demand proof and the other side has it, then you kind of just sealed your own grave. So I guess if I was Fetty right now, the only thing to do is, would be either to sit tight or if you know 100% that all this is being blown out of pro proportion, I'd jump in there, man, get vocal, say, hey, listen. <laughs> listen, mom, pull it up. You got the proof? Fucking prove it. Prove it, bitch. If you can't prove it, then fucking, then I'm going to unleash the, the braille, the little rats of the internet. Dude, you'll never have another post again without it being fucking just targeted. Because that's a huge accusation. If we find out that this accusation's all brown, brown, brown out of proportion. Oh, I rub the noodle. It's br I have to bro on it to keep it cool. If we find out that this situation's all blown out of proportion, then I'm going to be like the first one to say fuck that mom for putting a person in this situation with no fucking proof. That is the fucking, that is the most evil shit you can do to a person, maybe in the world or in this country, is accuse them of something as fucked up as this. And you know what? If, here's always been my stance on it. Tell me if it's, if it's too, too strong, okay? Let's say on the subject of like false rape, okay? That's a, that's a, Subject we talk about a lot in this country. Let's say a girl says she was raped by a guy and then it turns out she wasn't raped She uh, she just fucked the guy and he's overweight and then her friends found out and her friends made fun of her And then she was embarrassed. So then she said, oh, I, we didn't he raped me And then she changes her mind and says it's rape and Then they go through the text messages and find out that it was not rape and there's all this proof and uh, the, the girl ends up being the one who started this this is a made-up situation. It has happened when you find out that a woman has lied about something like that, I think the only fair punishment would be to give that woman whatever punishment the man was about to face, all right? Had they not found this proof, like in this particular made-up situation, had they not found the proof that the man was innocent, perhaps he could be in jail for fucking rape, sexual assault for several years, jail, prison. He would go to prison for that, just for having sex with a girl who regretted it later. So if that situation occurs, I think the girl should go to jail for however long that guy was about to. I think that's a fair situation. So if we find out that this mom just ruined, potentially, potentially could have ruined Fetty's career, I'm all for her career being ruined. That being said, if... Fetty is guilty of whatever this is, even if it's not a crime, let's just say he did something that was uncalled for or inappropriate, then I say, hey, hang that motherfucker out to dry too. You know what I mean? I told you guys I was going to do this shit unbiased, okay? I told you guys that. I'm trying to come at it like an adult. I'm not trying to start a witch hunt. I'm not trying to come out here and do a bunch of fake facts because a lot of people will read. They will read those uh, the DMs of bullying and they'll just they'll just make a, an assumption from that, or they'll see the picture of Fetty next to a cop and go, "Oh, that's it! He did it! He did it!" A lot of people don't have that critical thinking part of their brain that says, "Wait a minute!" It's always nice to question everything, right? 
I think that makes you a little bit wiser of a person when you question everything. And uh, I don't know. At the end of this entire conversation, I've been rambling for 30 straight minutes. At the end of this conversation, we are no closer to the truth than when we started it. Okay? But I feel like you're gonna accuse somebody of doing something and you have the proof. Post it. Post the proof. That's it. You know what I mean? I feel like the ball is now in the mom's court or the dad's court or the daughter's court. The, the ball's in their court. Fetty doesn't really have a way to prove he's innocent, right? Now, if there are photos of the text messages and maybe there's something that could possibly exploit the 14-year-old, I'm going to go over this all again. You don't want a 14-year-old getting their feelings hurt or exploited from this, right? But if you really want justice... The way to get justice is not to do a bunch of hashtags. The way to get justice, if you really have the proof, is to hang this motherfucker out to dry. And uh, I think we've come full circle with this. So I'm not going to ramble about that anymore. We've, uh, we've talked about it enough for the last 31 minutes. If you guys tuned in late, don't worry. You can rewatch this podcast on Sunday on either iTunes, Podbean, or YouTube. Let's go ahead and move on to the local news. Wait, quick podcast interruption. Stay tuned because at the end of this podcast, we do get some new, brand new information about Fetty. So stay tuned till the end because I said we're done talking about it, but we're not. We're going to talk about the news. Then we're going to talk more about Fetty. New information, bitch. That is all. Back to your programming. I'm sure my viewer count's going to drop off dramatically now. Man from the Netherlands was arrested for trespassing at a Nevada security site. Nevada National Security Site in Nye County. So these two guys were YouTubers, and uh, they tried to be funny. They went on here, uh, going on the security site, and uh, then they got fucked up doing it. They were released uh, September 12th. Uh, what did they get arrested for? Trespassing, I suppose. They were released after posting $500 bail. This is just a simple example of YouTubers, man. Quit fucking thinking everything's funny. Did we not learn anything from Logan Paul fucking with the dead body or throwing the fish around in China? Did we learn nothing from that fucking idiot? <laughs> the guy can't box. The guy can't fucking hang out in Japan or China without throwing fish on people. He can't even go to a goddamn suicide forest without fucking, you know, making a fool of himself. YouTubers, you don't always have to be stupid as fuck and bring attention to yourself and, and, and do dumb shit. Sweeping Grand's ear told deputies they knew English and could read warning signs, but wanted to see the property. So you can read, it says keep out. You say, oh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Fuck you, YouTube, hit that bell. We're going to jump over this fence and see what is over there. How to hit that bell. Make sure to subscribe. Uh, I hope I don't get shot. By oh, shit. I'm being arrested. Oh, fuck me. They said they were YouTubers and consented to a search in which deputies found cameras, a laptop, a drone, and phones. Footage of the site was on the devices. I'm sorry, officer. I didn't know. I couldn't do that. Both men were booked into the Nye County Detention Center on trespassing charges. YouTubers, quit fucking doing dumb shit and thinking you're going to get away with it. Remember that guy, Bonk Gang? Bonk Gang. He would just run into 7-Eleven and knock everything over and then run away. Or he would just fucking jump onto the counter and knock all the shit over. And remember, he eventually got caught because he walked into a 7-Eleven and grabbed two big, like, iced tea machines and just walked out with them. Then he finally fucking got caught. Can't be fucking around like that these days. Just because you got a YouTube and a camera doesn't mean you don't get in trouble. Look at the Fetty situation. Motherfuckers. <laughs> Bring it full circle, goddammit. Um, yeah, so that's a thing. Uh, I've been guilty of it too, though. Especially when I was younger, but these guys are adults, man. You gotta be adults these days. I know when I was younger, it was one of those things where uh, kids always do this shit on camera, don't they? When skateboarders get kicked out of a spot, listen, man, I know you're doing your job, but I'm doing mine, bro. It's like, no, you're not, dude. You're 15 years old, you're trying to kickflip a four stair, and you're failing every time. Get the fuck off the property. Listen, man, skate for life, dude. You can fucking, what do you, what do you make? Eight bucks an hour, dude. I'm fucking skating, dude. Fuck you. This, this skating, man. It's my life. You're going to kick me out of my life? That's called murder, bro. Dude. Fuck you, RPJ Phelps. Fuck you, dude. P-Stone, bitch. Bitch. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Uh, Listen, kid. We, we just want you to leave the property, okay? This 
This is a library. This kid's trying to study. You're over here screaming. Dude, fuck you, man. Fuck cops, dude. Fuck cops, bro. Kid, I'm, I'm not a cop. I'm just a security officer working for the library. Oh, dude, working for the man, dude. Fuck you. Skaters have no boss, bitch. Fuck you. Here comes my kickflip. Complete fail. Rocket airflip. Complete fall. Dude, fucking skater die, dude. I'm out of here, dude. Looks like a case of somebody's got the skater haters. Am I right, bro? <laughs> Kids are always like that, man. Not just being a rebel, but they're very defiant. Especially you put a camera in their hand. They put a camera in their hand. They're in there, dude. They're in there. Whoa, so I gotta leave? So, so I gotta leave? Oh, so you're not gonna give me one more chance? You're not gonna... Get the fucking hands off of me! That's assault! He's assaulting me. He's assaulting me. Hit like. He's a <laughs> dude. Fucking kids are the fucking worst. <laughs> I remember I was like that, man. I remember I was like that. I <laughs> it was before YouTube when I was just starting skating. It was I was before YouTube, but I was real dramatic and shit, man. I remember telling one guy, I was like, dude, go f like go go back to work, man. I'm fucking skating. Go back to work. <laughs> like, just, like I'm gonna order this guy around. But you know what, even as an adult man, okay, we're gonna change topics here for a minute. When somebody tells me to leave a spot and I'm really polite, I say, listen, okay, uh, these are my friends, they're from out of town. Uh, how about this, we can be out of here in five minutes. No, you're out of here. Okay, one more try each and then we'll leave. No, you're out of here, dude. Fuck you, you're trespassing, fuck you. And I say, listen, man, I didn't say fuck you. I didn't say fuck you or anything like that. I didn't say fuck you, I'm just saying, okay, you know what, we're packing up now, we'll get out of here. Yeah, you better, you better fucking get out of here. You better fucking get out of here. And then I'm like, even as an adult, I'm like, okay, motherfucker, call the cops then, bitch. Call the fucking cops. We'll sit here and wait for them. We will sit here and patiently wait for your pussy ass to call the cops. I'll li Once somebody crosses the line, once you get like three strikes. As I'm an adult now, okay? I give them three strikes. Once you call me a bitch three strikes and I'm just sitting here skating, like minding my own business, being respectful, not raising my voice, then I'm going to just go off. Okay, call the cops then, motherfucker. Call them. Uh, over or under. I'll give you five bucks if they're here in two hours. I will. I will. I'll pull, I will give you five fucking American dollars if these cops are here within two hours. You think they give a fuck about us skateboarding here? <laughs> Even as an adult, you know you do that shit. I see this all the time too on the topic of skateboarding. I see security guards grab skateboarders. I was a security guard for a lot of years. And uh, that whole, like, grabbing motherfuckers is, at least in this state, not allowed. That's assault. <laughs> like, by definition, that's assault. You could grab somebody if you see them commit a serious crime, sure. But that falls under citizen's arrest. You're not going to put nobody under citizen's arrest for, for trespassing or for skateboarding. You can't do it. Stupid. That being said, anybody grabs me, even a security guard, dude, I'm down to put it online. Anybody grabs my arm... When I don't want them to grab, I'm jerking away, and you fucking, you, you, you pull up on me, dude, I'm fighting. If you're a big security guard, I'm probably losing. But <laughs> if you're my size, it's, it's going to be a barn burner, goddammit, and uh, I'm not getting paid for this shit. Um, yeah, as a security guard, you should keep your fucking hands to yourself, okay? Security, when I did it, it was the art of, like, bringing people down. We used to call it verbal judo. It was the art of making an angry person into a cooperative person, Okay? It's the art of listening. It's the art of uh, understanding. The art of empathy and sympathy and understanding. That's how you calm an angry, violent person into a chill, cooperative person. Not by grabbing their fucking arm. That's just the way I did security. Maybe I did it wrong. Maybe I was doing it wrong. But I can tell you this, as a security guard, never got in a single fight with any person ever. And uh, doing event security at fucking Snoop Dogg and shit like that, fucking Ramstein. We dealt with a lot of drunken assholes. I did security for all the UFC fights, Muay Thai fights. All you deal with is angry people. Your fight or lost. You're halfway drunk. You're angry. Uh, you're trying to fucking cut in line, but some guy says, hey, "Excuse me, sir." You get a lot of "fuck you, dude." Fuck you. And you're just like, "Hey, listen, we're gonna we're gonna chill this out." It's my job to chill things out. Security guards these days, they think they're fucking Rambo. Jesus Christ, what happened to the world? Anyways. Ah, just just my thoughts. iBook Boy UK says, I'm in this with Ninja. If it's a switch and the security are being a dick, then fuck that fool. I'm always polite. In public, 
situations, I'm a, such a polite person. I know when I'm online or I'm playing Mario or even when I'm fucking yelling on the podcast sometimes, you guys might start to believe I'm a dick. Even when you guys watch some of my old Flat Bar Fridays where I'm just on the microphone talking shit, I'm actually a really polite guy. And you can ask anyone who actually has ever hung out with me, especially in like a, a sticky situation. I've told you guys a story uh, many, many moons ago on some podcast. I beat the shit out of this guy at the bar. I let this guy talk shit to me for like a fucking half hour straight. Maybe an hour straight. I don't remember the exact details. This guy bought me a drink and then took it back. And then he called me a fucking... Uh, he, was, he told me, hey, last time I was here, I paid for all your drinks. I was like, dude, I'd never come here. Um, I've never met you. I paid for all your fucking drinks, you fucking asshole. And I'm like, all right, dude. Like, don't even worry about it. And he's like, ah, oh, fucking, I'm sorry. Buys me a drink. Takes it back away from me. The bartender says, chill out. T talks shit to me, says a bunch of like racist shit in Spanish, and eventually he's like, dude, don't be a fucking punk bitch. Quit acting like a punk bitch. And I was like, okay, okay then. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> like, <laughs> set my fucking hat down, walked over there, beat this dude's ass. Moral of the story is, Lily thought I was acting, Lily thought I let this guy go so hard. She thought I was so polite, and I let it go so hard. She thought deep down I might be a pussy. That's my favorite part of the story, is that she was, she was considering the idea, wow, my boyfriend's gonna let this guy talk that much shit? I might be dating a bitch. That's how far I let this guy go, to where onlookers thought that, <laughs> onlookers start to feel bad for me, like I'm being bullied. But in reality, I would just want to keep things chill for as long as I can keep things chill, so... That's my favorite story of me being chill. Plenty of other stories from uh, from many years ago of me not being chill. Plenty of awful, terrible stories of me not being chill that I very much regret. But uh, but yeah. So let's move on to the next story. Former NFL player charged with worst hairline of all time. No, I'm just kidding. Charged after allegedly staging racially motivated burglary. But first. If you guys are watching this in video format, let's take a look at this guy's fucking forehead. Jesus Christ, the hairline from the back. Holy shit, dude. How do you get How do you get this? How what happens here? You know who was bur burglary? Somebody burgled his fucking the front part of his head. It's done. It's made, he fell off a dirt bike when he was 15. Only landed forehead first. Dragged 13 feet asphalt only forehead. Dude, no remains. There, nothing survived. Not one single hair survived that accident. Look at this. Burnt, scorched earth, deforestation, shining half crescent moon of a black forehead. Jesus Christ. Let's move on to the story. Police. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ooh, I laugh at my own joke. Sorry, guys. This is in Georgia, I believe. Police have arrested former NFL player after he allegedly staged a racially motivated burglary inside his Georgia restaurant. I can see they blurred it out, but I clearly can see uh, the N-word written right here. Nice job blurring it out, by the way. Uh, who, who made this? Uh, Fox, Fox. Nice job blurring it out, Fox. So, I'm just going to say this. Have we not learned anything from Jesse Smollett, people? Have we not learned anything from uh, Juicy uh, Smollier? If you guys haven't seen the new Dave Chappelle, it's fucking hilarious. It's great. And also, the new Bill Burr came out a couple days ago at midnight, so it's brand new. I think it came out on Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, definitely check out the new Bill Burr. A couple of small parts in there that I thought were kind of like, eh, these jokes aren't really firing. But a lot of it was really funny, and it sort of uh, couples right alongside the jokes Chappelle says. Also, on that note, Let's take a break here. Have you guys noticed? Watch the Chappelle thing and then come back to me. I'm not saying that I wrote Chappelle's jokes, but I'm saying our subject matter has been the same over a lot of years. And I think that means that my style of humor is the same as his style of humor. And you know what? I'm giving myself a compliment. I think that's pretty cool, motherfucker. A lot of the things he's discussed are things that we have discussed on this podcast, and we made a lot of the same jokes. And I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome, dude. Okay. Edon Lewis Kaufman, 31, played for several NFL teams from 2012 to 2016. 
Last suiting up for the Arizona Cardinals, he also played in the Canadian Football League. On Wednesdays, officers were dispatched to his restaurant, Create and Bake Restaurant and Kaufman's Creamery in Georgia, about an hour northeast of Atlanta. When they went inside, they found several racially motivated words and symbols spray painted on the walls and doors. Also spray painted on the wall was MAGA, Make America Great Again. Short for Donald Trump's slogan, Make America Great Again. Police also found several booth cushions slashed open, broken mirrors, and cut wires. The surveillance system was also damaged. Okay, now when you see something like this happen, the first thing I think is either this is for sure fake, okay? Because no average everyday person breaks into a place, knows where the security cameras are, cuts all the wires, does a bunch of racist shit, which clearly takes several minutes, doesn't steal anything valuable, and then leaves. First thing you say when you look at it, you're like, okay, like e either either this is fake, or they served some really bad food to somebody. <laughs> like, I've been to places where I thought to myself, dude, you mother, if I, it, this is the worst food I've ever fucking had. If I had a brick right now, I would brick this whole fucking window. I've definitely done that before. I've never bricked anything. I'm lying. I've definitely bricked a few windows. I've never bricked a window of a restaurant I didn't like. But I've definitely had the urge to. So this could have either been fake or angry customer. Let's read on. A witness told officers that they saw a black Chevy Silverado with no license plate leaving the business. Officers eventually caught up with that truck and noticed several televisions and electronics in the bed and cab of the vehicle. The driver of the truck was identified as Kaufman, who owns the business. He told them he noticed the damage and called his insurance company, but did not call 911. Okay, could be believable, maybe. After investigating further, the lead detective sensed something was wrong. And Kaufman was arrested and his truck was impounded. Inside the truck, officers then found a crowbar used to pry open the back door of his business, as well as several spray cans of black spray paint. You're telling me... That you pried open your own business, and then you took black spray paint, spray painted racist shit against yourself, racism against yourself on the walls, and then kept the evidence, and then drove away. You know what? I've said this a million times, okay? I know racism exists in this country. I know it's real, okay? But for this guy, this guy has never been the victim of racism ever, okay? Okay? All he would have to do, if he wanted some racist shit, all he would have to do is be a dick to a bunch of white people. Every white person that came into his building, all he has to do is be a dick to him. And eventually, you'll pry, you'll pry some racism out of somebody. You don't have to pry your own fucking business open. Eventually, if you play the numbers, you will eventually be able to pry some racism out of somebody. Okay? But he doesn't know that. He doesn't know that. For him, the only way he can get real racism in this country is if he fakes it. Does anyone look at the situation the same way I do? Does anyone else see the situation for what it is? The only way that this guy can be a victim of racism, he had to fake it on himself. It, this must be the greatest country of all time. This must be the greatest fucking country of all time. He doesn't have to write MAGA. He's in a country where the, the only racist shit that he has to endure is from himself. Are you kidding me? OG Phantom says it the right way. When white Americans aren't racist enough. So you have to manufacture the racism. Exactly, dude. It's so weird. And you know what it would be? <clears throat> it would be a mind fuck. <laughs> It'd be a mind fuck if this didn't already happen multiple times in the past. And also, they're too sloppy about it. They're too sloppy about it. You want some racism? Black people are supposed to be good at crime. But we're breaking all the stereotypes now because this guy blew it. <laughs> he blew it he, he had one chance to get some insurance money and he fucked it up dude all he had to do was throw the shit away go to the nearest dumpster one block away dump the evidence go on with your life racism achieved you got away with it oh man anyways police say kaufman conjured a premeditated plan to collect insurance money from his damaged business, disguising it as a hate crime, and selling off the undamaged electronics found in his trunk. Kaufman has been charged with a false report of a crime, insurance fraud, 
and concealing a license plate. He has since bonded out of jail. It's unclear when he's expected to appear in court. An annoying article <laughs> from an equally annoying hairline. That's all I got for the news today. Um, we've gone a little bit over time. I apologize for spending so much time on the Fetty topic. I know a lot of it was spent just repeating myself. So let's zip through what I have for this week. You guys have to check out Chappelle and Bill Burr. Last night was the luckiest gambling night of my life, but I did not win any money. I didn't win any money. Isn't that sad? It's not fair. I put in $20. And then I won 100, then lost 80, then won 100, then lost 80, then won 100, then lost 80, won 100, lost 80. I did this multiple times until the point happened at which I had spent over $1,000. I only put in 20, but I had spent over 1000 So you may think like, oh, that's neat, like weird, like cool story, bro, whatever. That is insane. Some people put in $20 and they lose it in 13 seconds. You could hit bet four times and it's gone. I did that shit for three hours and played a thousand dollars worth of credits and it fucking, it never, it never hurt me. So that's what I think is fair. That's what I think is nice about some slot machines. It'll let you play. I don't care that I lost the money. I had a blast playing the games I like to play. I even streamed it on twitch.tv slash ninja lifestyle. Uh, this last week I've been getting too drunk. Last weekend I left my car at the bar three times the reason i bring this up is because uh it's one of these moments where i'm gonna blame myself and i'm gonna let you guys talk shit to me in the future if you see me on twitter or instagram or discord saying i drank too much tonight i drank too much tonight you have permission to talk shit to me because that's the only way i'm gonna learn right now i'm trying to take control and not go overboard drinking the way i did last weekend the weekend starting boys Today's Friday, and I'm going to get fucked up. But if I get as fucked up as I did the other day, I'm going to go to jail eventually. I am. I've been getting too drunk. The other day, you guys know I'm good at drinking and skating, right? You guys have seen the Johnny Geiger video of me drinking and skating. I'm all good. I can jump on a skateboard after 10, 15, 20 beers. Oh, nay. The other day, I was at the bar. Skateboard came out. Don't know why. Don't know how. It was mine, though. Got on the skateboard. Couldn't stand. Couldn't stand in still. Couldn't stand still on the skateboard. A one-year-old child can do that. I couldn't do it. Then, good old bright idea Steve says, oh, I, got a, I got a pogo stick in my trunk. Jumped on the pogo stick. I got one sprawling. Fell right to my stomach and my knee. Blasted my knee, and it was in the asphalt. It was in the parking lot. Entire white shirt is now a black shirt. I did not, like, save myself at all. Scorpioned. Like, I, I, I threw my arms anime style and just took it. Why? Drunken idiot. I cannot let that happen again. I can't let that happen this weekend. I'm going to dial it down on the drinking for my safety. I'm serious. I'm saying this. I'm saying this like it's a joke, but I'm fucking serious. I'm going to still be able to have fun, just not go overboard. I've been going overboard last week, and it's going to become a problem. And today I'm going to make this conscious choice to not do that. And I'm involving you guys so that I have some accountability, okay? So, I don't know. I just want to tell you guys so that uh, it, it will help me to be motivated. The more people that I tell, the more people that can fucking keep me in line. I just received word that Fetty Potter in the past five or ten minutes posted his response about the incident. Uh, thank you, Keith King. We're going to read it right now. I have not yet read it. And begin. You may have heard or not, but on Wednesday, this girl who told me that she was 20 invited me via Snapchat to hang out. So we hung out at a park, walked around and talked. Then I drove her home. Some guy pulled her out, jumped into my car, took my phone, called the cops, telling them that I kidnapped her. Cops came. I told them what happened. She told the cops that she's 21. The guy was saying she was 15, so I don't know at this point how old she is. Then the cops asked me a whole bunch of questions. They then told me to block her and cut all contact. Then I left. Her mom is very upset and accusing me of inappropriate behavior. I understand her concerns as a mom, but I had no intention of ever meeting up with someone underage. Please don't attack her on IG. I've learned my lesson and never want to go through anything like this again. Now, I appreciate that response. I think um, it sounds totally logical, right? That sounds like something that could have happened. And... Maybe, something I had not considered, maybe Fetty, this entire situation, was more in the dark 
about what the mom was saying than us. So it's a sticky situation. I'm happy this happened. I'm happy we got to read this. And I'm happy that you guys that tuned in a little bit later may have gotten to see this. OG Phantom says, I've had a chick lie about her age to me like that. And it's an absolute fucking nightmare to deal with. Okay, the podcast is running long. But you guys just reminded me of a situation I was in back in the day. I think I was 19. I was dating a chick who was 18. Nah, that's not right. I was probably 20 and she was 18. I was dating this girl. We were hanging out. We were banging. Everything was cool. Totally legal. Everything's good. And uh, anyways, her mom finds out. So she's like super Mormon, not allowed to do any weird shit like that. Her mom finds her phone. Her mom didn't know she had a phone. Mom finds the phone, goes through it, finds my number, calls me. I'm at the skate park. She goes, hi, is this Steve? And I'm like, yeah, what's up, who's this? She goes, oh, you're dating my daughter. I've seen the whole conversation. I just want you to know that she's underage. So if this happens again, you're going to jail. And I was like, okay, listen, I've seen her ID. Okay, we've gone to movies and shit where you have to be 18 or whatever. Whatever it was, I knew for a fact she was over 18, for a fact. And the mom went as far as to threaten me telling me that she was underage to threaten me. So I just told her, I was like, okay, cool, whatever. I pretty much told her like that. Okay, cool, bye. You know what I mean? And then uh, everything, nothing changed. Still was hanging out with the chick. Nothing changed at all. Never went to jail for doing nothing wrong. But that's a situation I went through. Can you imagine if that situation existed when Instagram was out? I could be Fetty Potter from that very situation and nobody would know if I was telling the truth or if I was lying. That could fucking happen. And it did happen. I'm surprised I didn't think of that at the beginning of this podcast. Well, anyways. Ah, I think it was a great podcast, guys. I, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to go ahead and throw a sound clip in the beginning. Because I said I was going to stop talking about Fetty. And then this information came a little bit later. I'm going to throw a quick reminder somewhere in there. I'm going to edit it with my movie magic. And, um... That'll make everything cool. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Don't go anywhere because we're going to play some video games after this if you guys want to stay and chill and hang out. But if you showed up late, don't worry. The podcast comes out on Pod <laughs> on Podbean. I'm running out of breath, guys. On Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube on Sunday. It comes out early in the morning, 7 a.m., 8 a.m. Pacific time, so you guys can catch it then. I appreciate everybody for being here. You guys brought up some pretty good points about the whole thing. And like I said earlier... I think even after this podcast and even after all the evidence, I don't think any of us are any smarter than we were at the beginning. So let's just wait to see how this goes. Maybe we'll reconnect and talk more about it next week. I think that'd be the most rational thing to do. And my message to Fetty, keep your head up, man. Uh, no one on my squad is going to start this witch hunt and burn you up until we get the facts, dude. So I don't know if that means anything, but that's what I'm saying. So that's going to be that. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. If you liked it, tell a friend. You guys can also follow me on Instagram, YouTube, all that shit. Hit that bell. Make sure to go on YouTube, hit that bell. If you want to subscribe to me on here, that's cool. I get like $2.50. And uh, I guess that's it. Let me go ahead and shout out everybody in the chat. Please go ahead and give me a hell yeah in the chat. I also want to shout out everybody who contributed Steezy Skim resubscribed for seven months. He's a seven month subscriber. Thank you, Steezy Skim. 2112 iBook Boy. 2112 has followed iBook Boy. Donated $10. Thank you, iBook Boy. OG Phantom did a host. Mike Masters, X Blaze Reaper, and of course, Keith King donated $3 for Koopa Treats. Shout out to Froggy Man, Blaze Reaper, Guy Just Slap Head, Striped Shirt Samurai, Pizza Knife. OG Mickey, Keith King, fuck, iBook Boy UK, the nicest guy on Twitch, J6, Mike Masters, and everybody. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Don't drink too much, but don't drink too little. Let's play that motherfucking intro, outro. Motherfucker, what? An earthquake has struck this man's hairline. Call the police.